<laughs> My name is Kamasi Washington. I'm a saxophonist. I'm here to play music for you guys at the Brick House in Brooklyn. I play saxophone, for real. I can also play flute, clarinet, piano, and drums. When I was about nine or 10 years old, I had a cousin that gave me a, it was a mixtape of Art Blakey and Lee Morgan songs. I hadn't started playing saxophone at that point. I was playing clarinet. I didn't switch over to saxophone for about a year or two after that. But that's when I got into jazz and I started trying to play like saxophone players but on clarinet. I think that every musician has a, there's a certain sound, there's a certain, almost like a, a melody or something like that that is kind of in you and there's a, there will be a particular instrument that best kind of expresses that. And so for me, the saxophone is an instrument that best expresses the way I hear music. playing music since I was long as I can remember, since I was three years old. So music is kind of like a part of my life. It's something that I've always done. It's almost like talking, you know what I mean? It, it, it kind of gives you a different kind of relationship with music. When I was three years old, Ronald Bruner and Thundercat's dad had a band with my dad. I had a, a birthday party when I was three, and uh, Ronald Bruner Sr. brought Ronald Bruner Jr. and Thundercat to the party. And apparently I, I got a drum set for my third birthday party. In the beginning, I was the star of the party because I was playing my little drums and it was really cool. And then this kind of rumor started spreading around the party that there was a baby that could play the drums. And it was Ronald Bruner because he's about a year and a half younger than me, so he's like one and a half. And he, looked like, he looked like a baby. He had like diapers on and everything. We had like a little drum battle, you know, <laughs> me versus him. At three, he was one and a half. We'll leave it a mystery as to who won the drum battle, but <laughs> obviously I'm playing saxophone and he's playing drums, so. But I got two of the wildest, most amazing drummers on the whole earth. They both more than anybody needs, and they also both than most can actually handle. I love them both so much. We got OG Tony, our big homie, on drums to my right. And I got my oldest friend and probably one of the most talented musicians I've ever met in my whole life. I mean, Ronald can sing, he can rap, he can dance. He can talk to girls real good. <laughs> That's my oldest friend in the world. We've been friends since he was three years old, though. There's a man in my life that's definitely responsible for who I am, but he also had his hands in everybody's life on this stage. My dad, Mr. Ricky Washington. Can you come play for y'all? Ricky Washington on soprano saxophone. Having parents that were educators, I think, kind of gave me the love for information and learning. Um, like, my dad is a very, very talented educator. I don't know if I'm a very, very talented educator. I mean, I have a lot of information. I'm open with it, and if you ask me a question, I'll tell you the answer. But there is a talent to being a teacher. My dad's a very, very talented musician, you know, and I always, when I was a kid, I used to always wish that he got to kind of, like I said, like there was this whole, my dad and all of his friends, I really wish they got a chance to show the world what they had, you know? Because we all saw it and we all were really into it and it was really, it was really great for us. So the Change of the Guard, um, that song, I originally wrote it for my dad and his friends.
Uh, and it was originally like a kind of like a an homage to, to, to so many musicians who don't get a chance to be the guard, or don't get a chance to share their music with the world, don't get a chance to give their message to people and express what they've learned in life. They don't get the chance to really to, to give that. And um, sometimes it's a shame because sometimes I, I mean there's some musicians I know that could have had a great effect on music and the world in general and just didn't get a chance to do that. It's about like understanding that like there's so many musicians and so much music out there and that like it's we almost have to have a responsibility as a as a society now that like the way in which we get music is kind of changing and you have to go out and find it because there's so many guards that don't get that change. The music that people really, really love of ours is much more the stuff out of the box than the stuff that's in the box. There's like a, a myth that there's like, a, you have to make a choice to make music that is thought provoking or make music that people like. <laughs> and I, I've always, I've always scratched, scratched my head at that because I've always felt like the greatest and most popular music, you know, in the history of humanity has always been very thought provoking. You know, the notion that like a song has to be three minutes long or you lose people's attention. I'm like, I don't really believe that. I believe that people are kind of smarter than they've ever been. They just have a different relationship with information.